Today's video, we're going to be checking out the Hot Toys Suicide Squad product code MMS 407. This is Prisoner Harley Quinn. Played by Margot Robbie, her first and only appearance was in the 2016 film Suicide Squad. And even though she didn't really look like this until the very end of the film, it's pretty cool, though, that we would get this release from Hot Toys. For those, by the way, interested in how tall the figure stands, let's go ahead and take the tape measure. To the very bottom of her foot, to the very top of her head, Harley Quinn stands approximately 11 and a quarter inches in height display stand option she technically comes with two the first one being a standing display stand featuring suicide squad and harlequin on the front this has become a consistent trend with all the suicide squad or Su suicide squad related characters so even like batman for example got the same treatment suicide squad on the t on the front in the corner here and then you've got harlequin here and underneath that prisoner version I do really like the top portion of it though, and I especially love how you've got the shadowed effect of the bars, presumably behind or I guess in the front of the character itself. Adjustable neck, as well as the clip where the character can fit over top of it, and you can have her standing upright like this. Now anybody that followed this figure online knows, of course, there's some other options available for this character as well. She also comes included with this mat. And the mat actually would have the figure then crouched, or more so in a kind of legs crossed formation. I'll show you that in a second. So there's this option as well. I lean closer towards using this as the means for displaying the figure than I do using the display stand. Based solely, and the reason only why I say this is based solely on the fact that in the movie in which this character, or Harley Quinn specifically, looks like this. She is with her legs crossed. She is sipping a cup of cappuccino. So I think I would be going closer a little bit more so to this. Uh, one of the things you can also do too is you can move the figure off the stand. You can remove the waist, the actual clip altogether, and you can put the bedding on top of the stand. So if you want to have this look somewhat consistent with say the other six scale Suicide Squad figures, you can do that as well and then just kind of put the bedding on top where you've still got this on the front. I mean, it's not to say that you couldn't just simply have this particular Harley Quinn standing, but I think personally, my own, own honest opinion, I think you're doing a disservice to the character by having her standing. There's not really a whole lot that she comes with in the way of accessories. So really based on what she comes with, say the book, the slippers, and uh, you know the cup of cappuccino i think it makes more sense to have the figures with the, the figure with the legs crossed sitting down personally but i mean i guess you could really technically have her standing i just don't think there's a really kind of makes for a bit of a boring figure if you just have her simply standing the way that she is uh, one of the things too also because i've had her with her legs crossed for a good period of time one of the unfortunate aspects of it is it's extremely wrinkled the uh, the pants that she's wearing the outfit consists of a side bravo detainee outfit so the top portion the jacket as well as the lower portion are in this almost yellowish orange color and you've got site bravo detainee on basically all the areas of the outfit uh, ranging from the top portion where the the pocket would be uh, on the side you got d block only and then on the back, Sight Bravo Detainee and series of different markings there. Also, also is on her pants at the back portion and also running down the leg there. What was funny in this particular review was at the very beginning, I like to have different poses and different ways that you can display the figure, but I really struggled to try to come up with creative ways to end up ultimately displaying this character because, well, again, in the movie, her legs are crossed and she's sitting down. This was one of the, also the reasons why I guess it took me so long to review this figure because I was really apprehensive about the idea of being able to bend and manipulate the legs, so to speak, till eventually I got that crouching, uh, you know, legs crossed pose. 
Um, I worry over the course of time as six scale figures go that if you have a figure permanently in a certain pose, primarily in this case the legs being crossed, I wonder if that will add to some stress to the knees, to the legs, that if you ever do straighten them out again, I wonder if it will add to some looseness eventually to the legs. I hope that not necessarily be the case, but I'll show you how that all comes together uh, in a second. First and foremost though, let's have a look at this head sculpt. Now, when I bought this figure, as I've done with a couple of the other six scale figures, I buy it based on what I saw images online. And to be all honest, the original production photos of this, when they leaked to the internet, I didn't think it had the greatest of head sculpts. So when I bought the figure, I bought it with the intent that I really was expecting almost to be disappointed. And I can't, I can't even describe for a moment the co complete polar opposite effect that I experienced when I got this one out of packaging. The head sculpt, not only is better than I thought it was going to be, but I would almost dare say it's better than the other Suicide Squad Harley Quinn that we got before. In fact, I've entertained the idea of trying to swap this head sculpt out with the one that I got before on the other Harley Quinn. The only thing that's preventing me from doing that, unfortunately, is this section right here. This part's not so bad, but the strands of hair that are coming down from the back of her head as you can see, have distorted the sculpt of her hair. So even if you were to remove it, I don't think, I don't think it would actually end up leaving the hair in a good enough state. As you can see right there, it sinks itself onto the side. Not only that too, these aren't really intended to be removed. So if you did remove it, it may cause some damage to the figure. But ultimately what I would, done, would have done is I would have taken these off and I would have tried to replace them with the pigtails that were on the regular released Harley. By the way, speaking of regular released Harleys, here is the original Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad that was released. I think a lot of people probably agree that this is a nicer looking outfit, but I on honestly think that of the two, I think this one's the nicer looking head sculpt. I mean, I commend Hot Toys for the fact that they gave us a very exaggerated look on this particular Harley Quinn with the mouth open. But at times, I have to admit that there, I often look at this figure and I think to myself, I wish she had had just a more neutral looking face sculpt. If anything, maybe just a smile, not necessarily an exaggerated mouth open like this. This Harley Quinn would have been a perfect substitute for that. And again, my initial plan was take these pigtails off on the sides take these off and simply just do a swap of round. While these are easy enough to remove because they just have ball joints to them, I do feel like I would cause some serious damage to the figure's head sculpt if I tried to remove these. Or the alternative obviously would just be to swap the heads out completely and not necessarily worry so much that the hair is gonna be uh, different like this. The downside to that though is obviously when she's wearing this outfit, her hair isn't back and up like this. By no means am I actually knocking this figure. I think it's still a fantastic release for Harley Quinn, but just at times I feel like there are instances where I look at the figure and I think to myself, it's a little too much. Whereas this calmer, just smiling expression I think could have certainly gone a long way. The face sculpt is absolutely beautiful on here and really captures the likeness, if you ask me, of Margot Robbie who played Harley Quinn. So far her only outing in Suicide Squad, but supposedly off and on, and on and off, and off and on. Rumors of course circulate that we're going to be getting a Gotham Sirens, and we're going to be getting ourselves a Harley Quinn Joker spinoff, and we're going to be getting ourselves of course another Suicide Squad. So when that eventually materializes, I'm sure we'll be seeing Margot Robbie return to the donning of the outfit and being Harley Quinn again. But in the meantime, we can certainly appreciate uh, beautiful head sculpts like this, uh, to keep us going in the meantime. Skin tone is obviously pale here on Harley Quinn, but there's these little imperfections to the skin tone, which really goes a long way for making the figure look realistic. Um, she has a little bit of a, not quite a slick, but a little shinier of an eyeball sort of thing to give her that sense that there is life in those eyes. And she's got some nice tattoo work here, uh, both in the heart and then on the side there, she's got rotten. 
she gets herself some little Harley Quinn-esque things too with the eyeshadow. More of a smudged eyeshadow there on the blue and then the corresponding pink on the other side. I don't know if this is intentional or I really have to go back and watch the movie again. Looks like that she does have a one, one scar on her eyebrow here. Hair like with the original also has a slight off kind of pearl color uh, that's been added to it. It's not quite white, it's not quite blonde, it's something strangely in the middle. And like the other Harlequin as well, she's got these extra little strands of hair on the front. If anything was to be breaking on the figure, I would say it would be these ones here. So just be a little mindful, that, especially when you are turning the head, that the hairs don't get caught on the side collars of her outfit and snag as a result. So yes, we've already had a look at her outfit. There's really not a whole lot to discuss here. Um, orange jacket, orange pants, and then underneath that, she's got herself a white top. Um, she does also have a, a pair of bare feet. I do notice though that because the feet have a slight, as you can see, it's not quite flat, the undersole that is, uh, because it's got just a little bit of raised sculpt to it. I find particularly, and I'm sure it's across the board, I find Harlequin doesn't stand very well. From time to time, I can get her to stand, but uh, especially at the filming the beginning of this review, I found she, that she was toppling over a fair bit. And likely a lot of that because of the fact that her feet aren't completely flat. I suppose that would be a good segue to one of her accessories. She comes with a pair of, uh, well, cushy slippers. The slippers have a very dense plastic on the underside, which will then a lot for the feet to be completely flat. Probably give you a bit better of a, of a footing. But they are they do feel like they're real slippers just again a little bit smaller come here cinderella we'll go ahead and put your feet into the slippers like so and they slide very easily in place grabbing the other slipper slide that into place i mean it definitely adds one extra element to how you can get the figure displayed and also because the slippers are completely flat plastic the figure does definitely stand a little bit better included as well she comes with the book that she's reading at the very end of the movie mentioned this during the unboxing of this particular figure. I have to admit, while the front of the book or the interior of the book that she's reading looks good, has a sense of age to it, I'm otherwise very disappointed with the outer area of the book as it does look like just very blatantly obvious labels that have been applied to a plastic book. I don't know why the book as... I don't know why the book looks as cheap as it does. Uh, it looks like somebody would just photocopy this onto an inkjet printer. I mean, you can barely make out any of the, the actual wording on here. As I do find, even like on this side, the font is very blurry, and it doesn't look at all like a real book. Or at the very least, I mean, it does look like a real book, but it looks like a, a facsimile, if anything. By the way, also, if you're wondering why I took the slippers off the figure, uh, let's just go ahead and go back to the slippers for a second. While the slippers are flat, they give a little extra footing, a little bit more stable footing. The unfortunate trade-off is they are slippery, though. So I took the, the slippers off the feet of Harley just because I found when I did have the slippers on her, she was sliding completely off. She ended up falling a couple of times, so I just took the, the slippers right off. She also gets herself a saucer as well as a cup or mug of espresso. What's interesting though, the irony of the of the uh, the accessories that come included with the figure is at the very end of the movie, one of the requests that she makes is by having an espresso machine added to herself. That's one of the things that she wants as a result of saving the world. And ultimately, this six scale figure from Hot Toys, well she does come with the mug, she comes with the saucer, she completely gets omitted her espresso machine. If I was Harley Quinn, I probably would be questioning, like, why did I just say, I, where's my espresso machine? She doesn't come with an espresso machine. Now, granted, if she comes with an espresso machine, there, where would you have put it? They could have given you, like, a little small table. I mean, at the very least, she doesn't come with enough accessories to really think to yourself, like, well, the other Harley Quinn came with the bat, came with the purse, came with the guns, came with, a, really, a whole bunch of different accessories. Harley Quinn comes with slippers saucer, mug, uh, she comes with her cell phone, comes with a book, and then she comes with the mat. Nonetheless, the mat, because it's so much extra plastic that was required to make it, 
they thought to themselves, well, we don't really necessarily need to make an espresso machine. But at the very least, though, if you are picking up this figure and you're going to be displaying her with her legs bent, you know, sitting down on this, why they could not have given you an, an espresso machine that could have sat to the side of her? My tiny rant aside, she also comes with a purple phone. What's really neat about it is she's got the little Harley Quinn diamonds down at the bottom there. It does look like a small phone, like a one-to-one -one scale phone, and it fits in her hand. Let me also say too, it doesn't seem like I've yet to find a really good hand for holding the phone. Well, she does have suitable hands for holding the mug and the saucer and the book. I find like the phone sits a little looser on some of the other hands. Seems to me an ideal time to start talking about her hands. She comes with uh, four hands, four here, and then she's got two in the sockets of her arms. Um, she comes with a pair of relaxed hands. I just so happen to replace one out with a gripping hand. And then she comes with a hand for holding the book. Let me show you how that works. The book sits just in between her four fingers and her thumb. And she can hold the book like that and try not to try not to drop the book in the in the process. Uh, she also comes with the pinky finger holding hand for holding the sauce of uh, holding the the mug, and the mug sits just in between her thumb and her pointer finger, and she has the little pinky sticking out, which I really like. And then she comes also with like a gripping hand, which I suppose, if anything, you could put the phone in that. I suppose that is probably the closest thing, but it's a, not the greatest of grips. That ultimately, it does seem like she. Unless you angle the phone against, say, the pointer finger, and then the thumb is working as if it's actually swiping it, maybe that's what they intended by it. But if you have the phone in any other pose, it seems like it just wants to sit loose and oftentimes sliding completely out of her hand. We'll talk posability on her, and then I'll get her into the pose uh, where she's got her knees bent and crossed and stuff like that. Uh, her head does rotate left and right, a hinge up and down. So basically the ball joint looks like there'd be a double ball joint, one in the base of the neck, one in the socket that attaches to the head, and you get a full rotation there. Uh, unlike the Suicide Squad Harlequin though, it doesn't seem as if she's got any posability in the pigtail area. If they had only made this ball joint, you could easily just pop it out, replace it with the pigtails, bingo bango, you could have used it for the Harlequin from uh, the Suicide Squad outfit Harlequin. Arms hinge outward, as well as a forward and back rotation there. She also has a swivel, not quite in the bicep area, but she has a swivel in the forearm, and then she has the hinge happening there. A swivel in the hand, which also allows the hands to hinge back and forth, and she also has an upper torso crunch. Moving further down, she doesn't have uh, anything in the way of her waist swivel, that's completely, I guess, I guess really the torso here, because it's a ball joint, it's doing all the stuff that the a waist cut would have worked, you know, a swivel back and forth, so to speak. I mean, you can kind of get it happening up here, but it, at the very least, it's still a little on the limited side to get any motion and movements happening here. Legs split out, forward and back. She has a top swivel cut on the thigh, double hinge on the knee. And when we have a look at her feet, let me just lift up the pant leg so you can see what's happening here. Her feet are rubber but at no point do I feel like there's a hinge happening on the interior here. In fact, when I bend the feet, I feel like there's resistance as if there's nothing supposed to be really in there in the way of posability. Ah, so here comes the part I don't really like and one of the reasons why I probably delayed doing the figure review here uh, is getting her in the pose. One of the things that bothers me about this is that you're permanently putting this figure in, a, in an almost always the same, uh, you know, same sort of pose that I wonder if you're adding resistance to the legs to the point where if you ever have a figure, say, and I had this happen with a couple of my sideshow pieces, you know, many years ago, when I had the figures in certain poses, I found I was adding a lot of stress to the joints that when I made the figures legs straight again, I ended up having really, really loose legs. I don't know if this would be the case with Harley Quinn, but you know, oftentimes when you pick up a six scale figure, one of the things that they do mention is, you know, do not have a figure in a permanent pose. You know, it may cause damage to the joints, it may cause damage to the outfit. I don't feel as if the outfit is gonna be a problem here. It's my, my bigger concern is really the joint here and the joints in the knees. 
but ultimately you can get the figure in the pose and uh, then you can go ahead and grab the slippers which I just so happen to have over here and you can slide one slipper over her foot and the other one down here and you can get that going and then you can go ahead and just grab the cushion and you can put the figure just on top like so then to complete the look I've change the hands out. Let's go ahead and put the book in her one hand. You may want to just kind of twist the hand so it's slightly upright. And then you can go ahead and take the very small cup of espresso. Probably should have put that in her hand first. And there is the look of Harley Quinn sitting on her cushion. Now, even though I am a little worried about how the joints will be long term, this is going to be how I'm going to display Harley Quinn. And I'm sure many people that have picked up this figure for themselves probably will be displaying it in the same similar fashion. After all, this is how she looks like at the end of the movie when she is specifically wearing this outfit, specifically having those things in her hand. I can't really imagine why you would display her in just a standing pose. And really, she doesn't come with nearly enough accessories as well. At the very beginning of this review, I had her kind of holding her slippers, holding her phone and stuff like that. But I think really, even though I'm cringing the fact of having this, having her sitting like this, you know, for long periods of time, I'm probably going to end up seeing myself displaying her looking like this. The Hot Toys Suicide Squad Harley Quinn Prisoner version is actually a really nice looking figure, despite the fact that I feel the figure is very specific to a certain pose, the pose that I've currently got her here in Final Looks. I think you could still pull off having her standing uh, as a figure on display, but I think it really suits better to have her in a crouched, legs crossed pose, as that really is how she appears at the end of the movie. The head sculpt is absolutely gorgeous. I really wish there was a proper means to take the pigtails off the sides of her head, where I could have swapped her potentially with the Suicide Squad outfit Harley Quinn, because I think this is a better looking head sculpt in all honesty. One thing I do have to worry about, and uh, that's something I mentioned in this review already, is long-term having her legs crossed like this. I wonder, hopefully, that this is not going to cause long-term damage to the joints like the knees and the thighs. And uh, because, really, this is how I'm going to want to permanently display her. But I always worry that when I go to straighten the legs again, what kind of disaster, disastrous effect am I really going to get? Um, again, I don't think this is really a figure that a lot of people collected. I think a lot of people initially wanted the Suicide Squad outfit Harley Quinn and likely passed on the prisoner suit version. It's going to be interesting to see where the interest will be when the dress version of Harley Quinn comes finally released. I've actually got that one pre-ordered right now. And I'm trying to think of when that actually is going to be released. But hopefully it will be released soon and I can add that one on display with the other two Harley Quinns. Uh, personally speaking, I like the other Harley Quinn better outfit wise but i like the head sculpt better on this particular harlequin again just my opinion uh, but still i think it's a really good figure casual harlequin collectors may not necessarily pick this one up diehard harlequin fans of suicide squad specifically will probably be inclined to add this one to their collection as well if you did manage to pick this figure up for yourself though let me know in the comments section how you currently have her posed do you actually have her standing upright or did you default to the legs crossed pose that I've got currently going here and pretty much how most collectors from what I've seen seem to have the figures displayed as well. Today though, nonetheless, we're having a look at the Hot Toys Harley Quinn prisoner version version, prisoner suit version, which was product code MMS407. It's a little bit late on a review by the way as well, so I apologize for that. I kind of had put this figure aside with the intent I was going to review her right away after I did the unboxing and then ultimately just kind of sat, sat, sat until eventually I said, nope, I'm going to put everything else to the side. I'm going to have a look at this figure because I really wanted to have a look at her sooner. If you guys also had a, haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so. Many more Hot Toys reviews and six scale figure reviews will be coming your way. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time.